Okay, everybody. I have something really cool to tell you about. If you haven't heard yet about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain here. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will uh, distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one single place. Now, the way that you can do this is you got to download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm and then you can get started. It's really fun. We just switched over recently here at All Too Real 2 and I'm enjoying it so far. So be sure to check it out and uh, let us know what you think. To the latest episode of All Too Real Two. Wow, that was that was like right on. That was harmonious. <clears throat> Today, we are venturing back into the world of direct-to-video sequels, and we are covering the third in a series. First direct-to-video, though. A film called Grand Daddy Daycare. It's uh, loosely connected to the other movies. Um, The film came out in 2019, so it just came out. Um, Directed by Ron Oliver, who also is known for directing Bigger, Fatter, Liar. (laughs) Uh... Which we've covered on the show, um, may or may not have aired yet, but we will be covering it if we haven't yet. <laughs> um, yeah, he's directed episodes of Degrassi, The Next Generation. Awesome. Um, what else has he directed? I know he, I think he directed something else we covered too. Um, I'm not sure though. Uh, he, he's directed. Uh, he directed uh, one of the Beethoven direct video sequels. <laughs> um, oh yeah, he directed uh, Dennis the Menace Christmas. Oh God, which uh, we've already covered, but we haven't aired yet. We'll be airing that in December if this comes out before then. I don't know what order we air things in. Just a little behind the scenes. We don't record in order, people. You're welcome. <laughs> that's Matt's. That's Matt's catchphrase. Um, <laughs> that's right. It is. I forgot. <laughs> You're welcome, people. That's right. <laughs> I forgot my own. Yeah. New catchphrase. But anyways, uh, so that's who directed this. Um, it was written by Robbie Fox and David H. Steinberg. Okay, so what's the premise of this movie, Matt? What happens? Uh. The the dude who plays in Machete, um, I forgot his name. Danny Trejo. Yeah, he his character moves in with his daughter and son in law. Um, they don't they don't really explain why you know at first and um, but you know basically just trying to make the best of it and uh, he's you know very critical of his son in law because he's a writer. He writes like these kind of like um, action. Uh, Kind of like action spy, not really spy, spy novels, sort of like thing. that. It looks like I don't know. You can't really tell. 
But um, and and that's play, and that and that's his uh, son-in-law, um, Frank Collins, played by Reno Wilson. Yeah. Oops. And then, uh, so he's kind of critical of him. Like, you know, he makes like these comments, like, "Oh, when is the last time you released a book? You know, ten years ago." And he's like, "Oh no, it was five years ago." And he's like, eh, "Close enough," <laughs> you know, <laughs> stuff like that. And just like you know, he's very health conscious, like criticizing, you know, saying like, "Oh, you shouldn't eat salt." Salt, you know, retains water and it's bad for your muscles and all this kind of stuff. And um, so uh, he's he you know he hasn't really sold a book or written a book in a while, and his his wife's a, a teacher, so they're having issues like paying the bills and stuff like that. And uh, he gets the idea to do like this um, daycare thing for the elderly because um, his father in law invites um, some of his friends. No, sorry, he actually invites. Um, some of his father in law's friends over to play poker or something, and yeah, basically <clears throat> one of the one of the daughters of one of the older gentlemen that came over uh, offers to pay money to have him come over every day. So that gives him the idea to create a <clears throat> elderly daycare. Yeah, because you know she gave him like you know hundred dollars, fifty dollars, something I don't know, and then uh, it was a hundred dollars for a day. She's yeah. Yeah. So he's like, oh, I can get like you know, fifteen people here every single day and charge a hundred dollars. <laughs> totally, you know, illegally, like just no, yeah, you know, no facility. It's just a house, you know, stuff like that. And uh, you know, cause, cause he, cause he got, he knew that there was like a foreclosure notice, but he didn't tell his wife. Yeah, is what it was. Is that what happened? Yeah. Basically, he he had to <laughs> pay on their uh, mortgage or something, and I guess the house was going to be foreclosed on. So, yeah, basically that. So you know, high high stakes. You know, high stakes. Not not just a poker game that they are playing. You know, oh, high, high stakes aren't like uh, oh. steaks flavored with marijuana, are they? No, oh, okay. I don't think so. Well, that would so, be kind of weird. Somebody should do that. High stakes. <laughs> God, don't give Trump another business idea. <laughs> I want to get into the legal marijuana business. High stakes in Colorado. Yeah, his steak business did so well. Yeah, well. <laughs> yep. So um, so he starts raking in the dough, and uh, hilarity ensues because he doesn't really know how to do any of this daycare stuff, and he's just kind of just winging it. And uh, there's this kind of funny scene because one of the um, one of the people there, she's like, "Oh, I've got these um, these things that my my son gave me for pain, and it's like these like gummy candies or whatever. Yeah, they're or obviously edibles. Yeah, because like it's just like in a ziploc bag, and it's like okay, and then like so she gives one to everyone, and then of course they they go into this whole montage of like really stereotypical like being high conversation, like what well, if we're just molecules, man, or whatever like, type like, of thing. Like, like the stereotypical we're high, and this is a like college student film. Mm. High movie sort of thing, yeah. Um, yeah, and that lady was uh, played by very hilarious, hilariously actually by Margaret Avery. Um, she was she was pretty good in it. I thought. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've seen her in other things. It's been a while. She's been in. Oh, she was like in the color purple and a bunch of different things. Okay, yeah. That's yeah. Cool. So yeah, but that was like the biggest one. So yeah, okay, there we go. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's got a good cast though of of the, of the old folks in it. I mean, you got Hal Linden who was Barney Miller. You got Barry Bostwick from Spin City and Rocky Horror Picture Show, and from the autograph that he gave me in the movie uh, Home Run <laughs> Showdown, which I co-star in with 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 him. And by co-star, I mean there's a scene happening with him talking to somebody, and I'm sitting a few rows behind him as an extra. <laughs> So it was a very pivotal role, though. Yes, because, it was. I played that extra really well. Yeah. I was pretending I was watching a baseball game that wasn't happening, <laughs> and I, I had to do things like mouth and pretend I was talking to the guy next to me, who happened to be my father. They're like pointing at the and pointing at things something. and pointing at like, oh, somebody just hit a ball, or oh, watch that go. Yeah, it was fun, man. It was that's fun. <laughs> and then I got I got to meet Barry and get his autograph on a popcorn box. There you go. I'm the only person that has a autograph of Barry Bostwick on a popcorn box. See, that's how you do it. You, you you get unique autographs. Yes. Not just a piece of paper. Anyone can get an autograph on a piece of paper. Yeah. How many people are going to have a popcorn? And it wasn't box? even my popcorn box. It was just one I found. On oh, the okay. Gr- it was one I found on the ground. <laughs> that's even better. 
<laughs> so um, yeah. Anyways, uh, so yeah, Barry Bostwick's in it. Hal Linden, like I said, um, you got you know Danny Trejo, of course. You got Julia Duffy from Newhart, among other things. Uh, you've got uh, Garrett Morris from uh, Saturday Night Live. You got George Went from Cheers. Yeah. Um, there was a uh, who else was in this? Uh, there was there's a lot of cool people. Uh, James Hong from like everything. Yeah. Yeah. He's like the. He's like the Asian, the older Asian dude in like every movie you've ever seen. Yeah, it's it's a pretty like <laughs> yeah, like they they kind of went all out here I think with this yeah, movie. Linda Gray from uh, from Dallas, among other things, you know, who's still looking pretty hot, and she's like in her late seventies, early eighties or something. Well, Seventy nine, probably. Yeah, something like seventy nine. Yeah, she's yeah, and she's still looking pretty. Beautiful. Like I was saying, I thought she might be in her mid sixties. Yeah, no, she she does not look her age. I don't know. Yeah, so it was a good good cast, I think, actually. This is one of the better directed video mm-hmm. sequels we've actually seen. I mean, by no means is this the greatest movie ever made, but it was decent so far, I think. Yeah, yeah. so, so uh, yeah, what what happens after that? Like, they get the people coming mm-hmm. in and stuff, and... Uh, <clears throat> well, the first um, problem, I guess, they run into, you know, for the just to kind of keep the story going along, is that um, there's this guy who... He he sees all these people coming in in the morning, and you know they're handing medicines and envelopes to um, I forgot his name already. Frank Frank, Frank yeah. Um, hmm. And he works for um, family, you know, social services or family services. So he's he's kind of trying to you know just sort of snoop around to see you know if it's legitimate or not. And uh, his uh, his father in law used to be an attorney, so he's he's kind of telling him like just don't don't answer that question and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. Like, and so you come back with a warrant. He's like, oh well. I will, and I'll bring friends, type of thing. And um, and the second the second challenge they have for the story is that is that um his father in law, he has like the early stages of dementia, like he's he goes into like these weird like moments where he doesn't really know like where, where he is, where he is, who or anyone what, is. When it is, and the only thing that can bring him back is is someone ask him about like you know who who's like the dumbest judge you ever had to argue in front of yeah. or whatever high tower is mm-hmm. like the big one. So like. That will kind of like snap him back into it, but he had uh, two episodes in one week, uh, so it's starting to get you know kind of starting to progress. Yeah, it gets scary. So that's kind of like a both a sad thing in general, but also for the movie too, because like oh, this is you know not just like some cute little funny idea to do here. Like, no, you know, this is like you know, movie's kind of dark. Like it does. It gets like <laughs> there's like. Later on, like like you're saying, like all of a sudden, like got like in this really huge vicious argument. It's like whoa, like what happened yeah. here? Like it was just kind of like just a little bit sudden, like <clears throat> yeah. And we we've got a like a third like a subplot to or to this or whatever is uh of um the son of uh of Reno Wilson's Reno Wilson's character and uh, Roxana or um Ortega's character, who is his wife Emma Collins. Um, their, uh, their son played by Anthony Gonzalez named Jordan. He, uh, he likes this girl at school. It's like this whole other separate little movie going on that has nothing to do with anything. And he's, he's, he, he goes to try to talk to this girl and then he starts signing up on a sheet on the wall that he doesn't know what it is. And then he's signing up for a talent contest and, uh, so basically, he did it so he could spend more time with this Annie girl that he has a crush on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that that kind of like is a completely different movie. Yeah, because it doesn't really tie in <clears throat> to the it, except for like just the 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 father in law basically telling Reno Wilson's Reno Wilson's character of Frank to uh, you know you got to pay more attention to your kid. Yeah. And basically, throughout the movie, he's ignoring the kid mm-hmm. until that point. So yeah, yeah. He's focusing exclusively on the um, on the granddaddy daycare <laughs> because he's not even he's not even like writing anymore either. Like he kind of gave up on his book a little bit because he was like so focused on making this money and also yeah. just kind of making sure it, you know it works out because he's kind of got attached to the whole idea you know of the business and just kind of hanging out with those people too. Yeah, this this movie is is hard to rag on because it's not really that bad. So no. it's, it's really not like. Like with the, like Tooth Fairy Two or whatever, where it's, there's just absolutely so many horrible things you can yeah, I mean, um, point to. Like I said, it's not the greatest movie ever, but it's not you know bad either. Like this is the type of movie I would watch, like 
quote unquote unironically, even though that's the wrong way of saying it, um, at like midnight, like on Comedy Central. Yeah, or and I would something. actually like I would actually kind of like pay attention to it as well. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like one of those movies. I mean, I don't even I never saw Daddy Day Camp. I don't even remember if I saw Daddy Day Care. So I don't know how it compares to those two. So I'm not even really sure. Yeah, so. me too. So. <laughs> I never saw it. <laughs> uh, do you want to take a quick break here, Matt, and then we'll come back and talk more about the movie? Sure. All right. We'll be right back after this. Hi, folks. This is Michael Lee Collin II from the podcast that you're listening to right now, along with manager Matthew Haas. You got promoted? Yes. Damn it. Okay. Anyways, um, folks, uh, do you like the show Superstore? I don't know. I asked the folks and nobody's answering well, me. Because they're not here. Oh, but we love damn it. it. Yeah, we love it, though. Okay, folks, if you like it as much as we do, you're really going to like the Super Story podcast, which is a podcast where Matthew and I go uh, episode by episode and give our little opinions and thoughts on it. Uh, sometimes we have guests. Sometimes we don't. Um, just depends on how we're feeling. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so if you like this podcast and like our little crazy banter then you should definitely check this out or I might get sad. And when I get sad, it gets pretty sad. So I can't deal with him when he's sad. Yeah. No one can really. So, um, yeah. So so. check out a super story podcast right here where you get this podcast, super story podcast. Step one, dramatic introduction. I am Magus Elgar. Magus that lore Elgar is one of the more respected casters in all of Hearth. The dragon bone plate in my skull probably needs its focus enchantment line. Though don't expect to go under his tutelage unscathed. Well, you know what they say. Pretension can turn intention into the best retention. Nobody says that. No, not really. You can hear Magus Elgar and his exciting adventures. Visit MagusElgar.com to download your copy today. And we are back. Back. Guess who's back? It's us. You? Oh, it's, yeah, us. it's us. Yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> I was wondering if it was you know the people outside there having a oh, party yeah, we, or whatever. We, we we had a fun time coming coming to the uh, studio tonight, which is my apartment. Um, but uh, <laughs> the, the, somebody decided in the apartment complex that they wanted to have a party in the parking lot for no fucking reason whatsoever. I wanted to kill them, <laughs> and then they kept setting off car alarms and shit and. Yeah, yeah, and there was like twenty or thirty people just standing outside. Maybe yeah. not that many. I don't no, know. It was, but, it was yeah. about fifteen. Yeah, it was a lot. It was like five thousand people yeah, in it was my 5, parking. Five thousand like... people in the parking lot. <laughs> oh, <yes. clears throat> it was the Toledo tailgate. Yes, as I named it. Yep. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> because there's nothing better to do than hang out in the parking lot of a an apartment complex. You, you don't know how to live, Mike. I mean, it's it's just. I, I don't think I've ever done that. You should try it. It's the best thing ever. Maybe maybe we should have joined Just, them. Yeah, I don't think they would want us. No. No. Because we're, we're strangers. We're strangers and we're kind of nerdy. Yeah. They didn't seem like they were the kind of nerd type to like talk about The Flash and Legends of Tomorrow. Who knows, though? Maybe. You may, you may have found like We're a, stereotyping them now. We, we, we may that. have actually found like the, the biggest fan. Of, maybe like, that's what they were doing. They were just hanging out in the parking lot talking about uh, <laughs> about superhero TV shows and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, we could have joined in and had like mm-hmm. a grand old time with it. Yeah, then they could have watched Granddaddy Dare, Granddaddy Daycare with us. With us, then I don't know if I'd want day. fifteen people in my no, apartment. No, it'd be kind of it'd be kind of cramped. It would. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But. <laughs> that 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 have been that have been interesting. Very interesting. Or we could have just let the door open and people could kind of just walk in and out and then mm-hmm. like also like people can leave like plates of food right outside the door if they wanted to without any kind of covering like yeah which, oil which happens tin. in my apartment complex too they could this just, is a fun place matt i i i was actually tempted to like take just that steal that food if he, if he didn't come back to get it i mean uh-huh. it looked pretty good to me it looked like it was like some, some kind of mediterranean um yeah. meal i mean mm-hmm. but it might have been spoiled by them because there's literally no tin foil no um, and, and, wrap. and back to the toledo tailgate <laughs> Something I need to mention what? is there was a woman just walking around with her baby in her, with, with her like you know one or two year old child. See, I didn't her, see that. Yeah, I, I, she's just like standing around with the kid, and I'm just like, and there's people drinking and stuff there, and I'm just like, put that kid in bed. Well, she wasn't probably drinking. She probably didn't, you know. Yeah, but still, don't hang out in a parking lot with your fucking kid. I'm just sorry. It's just pissing me off. 
I'm just saying you don't. You don't know you're, how you're putting the kid in danger. That's all I care oh, about. Parking, I'm not sure, but, well, but. Get a bunch of people getting together. Somebody's bound to fight or something. And I'm just saying that. And alcohol is involved. And I'm just getting. I'm just saying. And plus, it was after like ten or something, you know. And they're out there hang, hanging out, and it's just you know. I'm I'm just saying. I'm just saying you have to let you have to learn to let loose, you know. Just join well, it's, the it's, join it's, the party, uh, you know. I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I can hang loose, Matt. <laughs> I don't think I can. What happened to your voice? What happened? I don't know. Uh I got up in this register Uh and I can't get back Uh down. That's scary. Uh Uh-oh. Hello. We have a problem now. Hi. Okay. Now I'm in this voice. Whoa. He can't find a middle of ground. It's like... So what has happened in the film, Matthew? Let's see. Uh, The dude from social services comes... uh, That's a lot of S's right there. Social services. Social services. This is a, can you hear those S's? Social social services. Oh my God! Freaking lisp here. Anyway, <laughs> so he comes there with his um warrant, I think, and he says, you know, you have to comply with this to get a license in so many days. I don't know. And they try to go get a license, and th- this was kind of fun because um, the father in law is like, well, what are you gonna do with all these people just hanging out in your backyard? So he's like, so he drives all of them in his minivan or whatever. And, like, of course, you know, there's a whole joke. So, like, can you pull over and stop to go to the bathroom? And he's like, I told you to go to the bathroom before we left. He's like, I did, <laughs> but I have to go again. And uh, so so they go to the the place to get a license. And then the, the woman who works there says, you know, it's, it'll be about 12 to 18 months before it'll get, um, you know, mm-hmm. you'll be able to get certified or whatever. So, and, like, uh, they kind of go back and forth a little bit. Like, Frank's, like, says, well... You know, we need a license today. And she's like, oh, well, you should have applied 18 or 12 months ago. <laughs> then the one dude, co- he comes back. He's like, hey, wh- where's your bathroom? And she's like, down, oh, really? you know, down the hall, whatever. Uh, so then they go to um, like a diner or whatever type of place. And they're just kind of, hey, oh, no, it's funny because they're all like ordering like these really weird things. Like I'll have the special, but they're like making like they're requesting like yeah. special orders like i i don't want the rice stuff i think he meant hash browns mm-hmm. i'm thinking i don't know because he said fries instead of the yeah. rice stuff so i'm thinking yeah i don't know i don't know it's um, my favorite one was barry bostwick's character who said uh who, who said um can i substitute the steak for chicken because i'm lactose intolerant yeah that's right <laughs> and then the waitress is like um okay <laughs> and then uh um i forgot her name but uh she was she was married to um, the dude who played Norm from oh, Julia Duffy's character. She's yeah. like, I'll have a Rob Roy, and and then like t- t- the the waitress is like, do you want that with cheese? And then she's like, never mind. <laughs> so that's like, it was funny because apparently Rob Roy is a drink. I I yeah. didn't know this. What what is it exactly? What's in it? Do you know? I don't drink, so I don't know. I just know. Well, I've you heard knew it. it was a drink. So I, I I've know. heard of it being okay. a drink. That's all I know. I don't know beyond that. Okay. Um. <clears throat> And I know Rob Roy was like, like the like wasn't he like an Irish or Scottish uh, like um, legend or something or I don't know. <laughs> I didn't know, but that would be like really stereotypical if they named a a drink after like an Irish. Um, oh, they probably did. <clears throat> well, I, I didn't realize this though <clears throat> until recently that there is a a phrase called Irish twins. Oh yeah, it's which, it's where you're born. Um, less than a year apart. It's basically like a really racist. Uh, yeah. Because it's basically saying like, oh, you know, those Irish, they procreate like crazy, you know, type of thing. Like, those Irish can't. Like, yeah. Oh, Robert you know. Robert Roy McGregor was a Scottish outlaw who later became a folk hero. Okay. Yeah, because there was a movie with uh, Liam Neeson that played him. Oh, okay. Robert Roy. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. <clears throat> well, that's cool. Yeah. And the cocktail. Rob Roy is a ca- <laughs> cocktail consisting primarily of whiskey and vermouth. Created in 1894 by a bartender at the Waldorf Astoria. She likes whiskey. That's my yeah. It's, it's because it's a uh, it's it's Scottish <clears throat> alcohol. So gotcha. that's why it's named after Rob Roy. Yeah, that's my kind of gal. I like whiskey. I don't like scotch though. So if, it probably has scotch. I don't like that. But um, <clears throat> isn't scotch and whiskey related or something? Well, I, I think scotch is whiskey. Yeah, it's called. I think it says scotch whiskey. It's like yeah. It's, I think it just depends on how. I don't really know what makes a difference if it's like if it's brewed like in a different type of barrel or something. I'm not. I don't really know, but I just know that I've it's, had it once. It's, I didn't it's like brewed it. in a barrel that's held together by Scotch tape. Yes, that's what. 
Because they have scotch tape back like in the 1700s or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they trademarked the name and everything. <clears throat> God. Can you imagine how that was taste, though? Was gross. <laughs> you ever smell scotch tape? It's got this really weird. Uh, That's what I had for dinner last night. You had scotch tape for dinner. <laughs> what? Just microwaved it? Oh, gross. Yeah, it all melted into just a plastic put, ball. Put it into some macaroni and cheese. Just... Oh. It's disgusting. I didn't have any noodles, so I oh. thought, hey, and the scotch tape will work. I just I rolled it into noodle forms oh. and yeah, <laughs> put cheese over it. Yes. God. <laughs> oh boy, that was good. Yeah. <laughs> I can't poop now, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think you're gonna have some problems for a while. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> the um, the movie. <laughs> oh yeah, the movie. That's right. I forgot we were talking about a movie. Oh yeah, <clears throat> yeah. They, they're at that diner or whatever, and then at one point, um, Hal Linden's character who is is stuck in the ba- stuck on the toilet, he can't stand up. So Reno Wilson has mm. has to go in there and he has to help him. So yeah, I love that scene because <laughs> he's like, he's like, are are you finished? And he's like, yes. And and to answer your next question, yes, I wiped. <laughs> <laughs> And, and also, too, that's right. His father-in-law had another episode in, at the, in, in yeah. the diner. They were just kind of talking, and all of a sudden, he just, like, went into, like, a trance and was like, you know, who are you? And he got him to talk about Judge Hightower again or some other judge yeah. to kind of snap him out of it. <clears throat> yeah, Which is kind of cool because that probably means it's, like, the very, very early stage of dementia where they could probably actually work on it a little bit where mm-hmm. you can just snap someone out of it by kind of triggering like another memory from the past to kind of you know focus on that type of thing because like you know like with my aunt and stuff like that that was you know pretty much far along to the point yeah of, like there was no i remember my grandma know. when i was a kid before she passed away where she couldn't she would think that different people in the family were different people right and stuff. it was kind it of was sad yeah didn't know who i was for a little bit yeah. there it was scary yeah anyways um but the uh motorcycle there's a motorcycle going by folks it's not the party maybe it's maybe he's showing up to the party there's a party over here there's a party over, over there. there there's a party 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 everywhere yeah i don't know what that was i just made that up i don't know that's my party song <laughs> i pretend that you know all parties that's that's the type of music they play what there's a party over here there's a party over here there's a party over there there's a party 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 everywhere it, that's how parties are, right? Mm, and then kind there's, of. And there's there's clowns, like in the movie. That's right. There's clowns in this movie too. Yeah. All parties have clowns. Well, of some, some, some form. Some, <laughs> some form. <of. laughs> yeah. So in this movie, they 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 end up uh, having to uh, go to court. And conveniently, the father-in-law's a lawyer. So, <laughs> but same thing as the court day, they have to uh, try to uh, get um, one of the um, characters, the Linda Gray's character, has been put into a nursing home, and they want to like break her out, you know. Escape from Alcatraz style or something. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, Blanche. Yeah. Her stepdaughter is like vicious and just wants to get rid of her so that she can get a bunch of um, inheritance money from um, her dad, I guess. Yeah, from the biological father or something. Yeah, from the uh, (coughs) widow, the, the, uh, the, or the, the, the dead husband of, uh, (laughs) what was that, Matt? What was that? That was kind of cool. I like that. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Anyways, um, <laughs> what? So yeah, but they they have to uh, they they basically do this whole like uh plan, and they all go dressed as clowns to the uh nursing home to break her out the same day as the uh as the uh court date. So they have to try to get done with that, and then get uh. Uh, Danny Trejo's character back to the courtroom so he can argue the case. Mm-hmm. So hilarity ensues there. Was it hilarious? It was all right. It wasn't yeah, funny. It, wasn't I mean, really it was okay. Yeah, it was like you know just a cool heist, mm-hmm. get her out of there because it, it was like apparently like 
supposed to be one of the worst nursing homes like there is like it's just yeah bad like no one there's really nothing to do and stuff like that and uh yeah they break her out right yeah and then what happens do they go to the court date yeah court they, hearing or whatever they go to the court hearing by the way, this courthouse does not even look like a courthouse no, at I, all. It looked like they just set up in the like lobby of a of of a like building or something, and then just said, "Hey, let's put a judge's you know thing up there and thing with a judge's yeah judge's thing, you know, <laughs> one of those things." <laughs> What's wrong with me, <laughs> man? A judge's thing, you know. Like they had a brick wall in the background. A judge's bench. A bench. There That's what I was going for. <laughs> they had a brick wall in the back and then and then there's stairs. Like I'm like, okay, is this, is this like a gymnasium that they just it set looks up? Like it. And oh by the way, uh, like you were saying, the uh, the guy who played the judge um was Clint Howard. Yeah. Who everybody knows. And who is he? Who who, who is he relation to? He is uh Ron Howard's brother. Yeah. Anyways, oh yeah, earlier on the movie too though, they the way that they were able to keep the place open for a little bit was because they were able to get a uh a, uh unused license from the daddy daycare from the other movies with a third guy now playing uh <clears throat> the uh Charlie Hilt- Hilton or H- Hinton character that uh that uh, Eddie Murphy played in the first movie. And now it's uh, he looks nothing like him. He looks, he, I mean, he's he's an African American gentleman. That's it. That's the only with with facial hair, and that's about the only things they have in common. He probably weighs about a hundred pounds more than Eddie Murphy. But he does, does look like a, maybe Eddie Murphy just gained some weight. Maybe that's true. And um, I think he looks more like Eddie Murphy than uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. did. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, the guy who played him, by the way, he he was um. I don't know him from much, but he played the bartender and forgetting Sarah Marshall. If you remember that movie, like in in Hawaii, he was like the kind of just sort of sarcastic um, bartender yeah, that yeah. that could memorize all the the names of all the different fish. And the actor's name is uh, Devon McDonald. Yeah, yes, he was really funny in that movie. Mm-hmm. In this movie, he was kind of funny too. He only had one scene, but it was yeah. still pretty funny because he basically like. He started off with like a oh, one hundred thousand dollars, and then he went down to okay, you can give me fifty thousand now, and then fifty thousand later, and then and then the father in law is like, I have two thousand dollars, and the guy's like, yes, and he's like, like yes, I'll I'll allow that. <laughs> like, so he went from a hundred grand to two thousand dollars in like thirty seconds, and so uh, so they can save their house and everything. They end up doing this court thing, mm-hmm. and. Uh, they finally get to the courtroom after all the clown hilarity ensued, and they and they uh, they got Blanche out of the shady acres or whatever the yeah I forgot the, I think it was like called that. Shady Acres yeah, yeah. um because at least at least they, they didn't shady. Go, at least they didn't go with Shady Pines which was like the one that uh, they talk about in Golden Girls all the time so, oh wow yeah so they, <laughs> maybe they did that kind of on purpose a little yeah. bit sort of uh, anyways uh, so they. Guess what happens though? Oh, you called this too before it happened. You want me to say it or are you gonna say it? You go ahead. Uh he had another episode right before he was going to argue the case. Yeah. Like right as he stood up and was about to get into a speech, he just apparently just forgot yeah. everything. Then of course he had to go back to talk about Hightower to get him. Yeah, and then, back. He, and then he then he got back and then he uh argues the case and guess what happens then? And then the judge approves and gives they, them 90 days to get their stuff get their, in order get their and, shit in order yeah. and you know up the code and then it's revealed that the judge knows him because he says it's and good says to see you on this side of the of court the, of the bench yeah, or, 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 yeah, yeah sorry or whatever yeah. yeah so yeah that was um then they then they they, they end up having a little party mm-hmm. and uh yeah the little girl annie comes to the party too and she uh she basically tells uh, the kid that she wanted to hang out with him anyways, even mm-hmm. if he sucked. Oh yeah, he he had, he had auditioned for the for the thing earlier. I forgot to mention that, and he sucked. At one point, he was singing "Don't You Forget About Me," and he he was actually doing a decent job up until the point where his voice cracked. So when yeah, he was, when he was trying to go for like a falsetto high note, and so. then he, yeah, he kind of lost it after that. But he was he was actually doing all right. Yeah, so I don't know. 
But, uh, but anyway, she says, oh, I would have hung out with you anyways. And, you know, and then they share a chip. That's right. Nice little chip. Yes. It looked like a barbecue one, I think. <laughs> Might have been a Lay's. I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> it wasn't a Pringle. <clears throat> no. No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Anyways. Analyzing the chips. So yes. It's one of the more finer points of the film. You got to. No, that's, the, that's the next podcast we have. It's called <laughs> All Too Analyzing the Chips. It's kind of a long name. All Too Analyzing the Chips. We just analyze potato chips in movies. Sometimes, sometimes we do tortilla chips. Yeah, you know, in very special episodes, you know, around Cinco de Mayo or something. <laughs> Anyways, um, wow, wow, that was racist. Anyways, um, <laughs> wow. So, um, <sighs> and once in a while, we'll get into like chocolate chips. Yeah, you know, for our dessert episodes. Yes, all yes. two desserts. <laughs> And then sometimes we talk about like microchips. Microchips. Those are our small episodes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> li- literally. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, um, anyways, the Reno Wilson's character decides that he wants to get back to writing and he's decided that he's done writing about his, uh, character named Jack Quartermain. Doom, doom, doom. Probably like a play on Alan Quartermain, which is the, you know, lost city of gold and all that. Right. Yeah. Um. The uh. And either that or he's a big fan of uh, General Hospital, and there's an Alan Quartermain on there too, but it's spelled differently. And um, one's like E N and one's A N on the Alan. So um, the uh. But anywho, um, they uh, he ends up writing a book called the Shady Acres. Uh, what was it? The Shady Acres something. Oh shoot! Uh, the Shady Acres. Shady Acres. Uh, Escape? I don't remember now. No, it, it began with an S. So it was like the Shady Acres uh, Shakedown or something. Yeah, I, I think know. it was called the yeah. Shakedown. Yeah, and um, yeah, it was about the uh, it was about the time that they uh, that they 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 got Blanche out of the Shady Acres. Yeah, yeah. and it's fictional. And by the way, the guy has a machete. You know, yeah, the at the end, at so. the end, Danny Trejo has a machete. Yeah, because I think I think he tries to. Bring a machete in almost everything he's in. It's like yeah, I'm like, pretty sure it's in his contract. Is it? No, no, I'm joking. No, no, <laughs> well, no. I just I've, I've seen like a bunch yeah. of stuff where he like at some point he's got. I like a him on um he's he's been on Brooklyn Nine Nine a few times. Yeah, um, he plays uh Rosa's Rosa Diaz's dad on there. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and uh, he um yeah I don't think he's had a machete on there yet, but he's okay. pretty cool on there. He he was a good casting as her dad because of the whole stoic uh, attitude of Rosa on there. Mm-hmm. Anyways, do you want to take another break here, Matt, and then we can talk? We can read some reviews of the movie after that? Sure. Okay, we'll be right back, folks. Was A Quiet Place inspired by signs that comes at night in War for the Planet of the Apes? Was Ready Player One influenced by Avatar, Wreck-It Ralph, and The Last Starfighter? Is the Hurricane Heist more influenced by Sharknado or Geostorm? These are the kinds of questions my guest co-hosts and I discuss on my podcast, Piecing It Together. Every week, we look at a new movie and try to figure out what other movies inspired it. Whether it's the story, the character development, tone, or even use of music. Every movie was influenced by something that came before, and we want to figure out what. Check out Piecing It Together on your favorite podcast app or check us out on piecingpod.com. You can also follow us on social media at piecingpod. Piecing It Together is a part of the All Points West Podcast Network. Hey, folks, this is uh, Michael E. Cullen II um, from the podcast that you're listening to right now, along with Matthew Haas. We just wanted to tell you about our great, great podcast Super. called Super. It's called All Too Real. And on that show, what what do we do, Matt? We we watch biopics, and then we talk about whether or not the movie matched up with the real story or not. So we that's we, a lot we, more exciting, than that though. Yeah. So, so 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 we we analyze the real story and the real story. Get it? Get it? Real. You know? Yeah. They're, they're spelled differently, yeah. folks. You can guess which one I said which way. Uh-huh. Anyways, um, so uh, sometimes we have guests, sometimes we don't. Um, but we uh, talk about great, sh- great, uh, great movies like uh, Shattered Glass yes. and The Social Network and. Uh, a futile and stupid gesture, among others. Um, those are some of the ones that we've covered so far, and uh, we're going to cover a lot more. So uh, please uh, subscribe on Stitcher, um, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you uh, find your great, fun podcasts. And be sure to share it with your friends. Do it. Do it. Do it. And make sure you're not afraid to get all 
to real. Bye bye. And we are back, 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 back. Okay. Anyways, um, so review time, people. These are some reviews that I've culled from the annals of the Internet Movie Database. Anyways, um, so here's a one out of ten star review here. What? Yeah, come on. Terrible is what uh, Preston Heal says. This is from May of this year, of 2019. Um, okay, as far as comedy goes, blah, for real, this isn't a comedy, not even much of a movie. It's like the worst. I think s- spoiler is the movie has no comedy so be prepared it's even that funny at all okay preston that it made no sense and there was no punctuation in that well, that bruce uh, he doesn't know anything yeah he thinks he's some good commentator doesn't even know mm-hmm. how to... it like uh you know it's like not even like uh a comedy like uh you fucking idiot sorry <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> really like how many funny lines i mean there was there was like so many like cool like quips and stuff like that i mean was he not even paying attention probably not um here's another one star review by spontaneous bust i don't know i can't write okay (laughs) Um, this was just written in july of 2019 um straight to Straight to DV, retired, no work actors. While I don't, while I doubt these actors could do a great job with a good script, story, etc., it's very telling that the absolute A list or top of the bill person for this movie is washed up Danny Trejo. He's not washed up, you fucker. Anyways, bad writing, bad plot, bad jokes, bad effects. What few there are effects. Well, they're right? not supposed to be effects. Yeah, there I mean, really weren't any. That, um, it's anyways. not that kind of a movie. We couldn't even finish the movie. I want my dollar back. Your dollar, really? Yeah, I probably got it out of Redbox or something. Um. Okay, so um. Yeah, there's not really great reviews on this. Um. Here's a four out of ten. By uh. No God, no masters. Okay. That's, That's the an per- anarchist uh, yeah. saying, okay. Okay. Uh. That's the person's screen name. Um, it's a l- 4 out of 10. It says, let in the clowns. Warning, spoilers. Okay. Frank, Re- Frank Reno Wilson is a writer with, uh, with writer's block. His family takes in his aging father-in-law, Eduardo Danny Trejo. Um, Eduardo is a former lawyer, ex-con, and has uh, periods of forgetfulness. Circumstances lead to Frank opening up a unlicensed daycare for seniors. This gets him in legal trouble. The film consists of a lot of past careers of people I thought should have had better gigs for their talents. There was a lot of silly slapstick. The humor wasn't great, but some might find it acceptable. Guide. No swearing, sex, or nudity. Warning. Polka music. Uh, okay, you need a warning for that. Yeah, they their review was basically just uh, giving you a, I don't know, recap of the movie. So it's not even a review. Yeah. it's just a synopsis. Okay. This next one I am not reading, but I'll read the uh, headline. It just says offensively, uh, offensively ageist and offensively unfunny. Um, it's not ageist. Yeah, right. this one is a ten out of ten. And um, I'm going to read it just because I think it's a joke. 10 out of 10. I love Eddie Murphy. This is from Witty10398 is the person's name. 10 out of 10. I love Eddie Murphy. My friend Eddie was amazing with a capital A. I just couldn't stop laughing. This is probably the funniest movie I've seen since Daddy Day Camp. 8 out of 10. But then it says 10 out of 10 up at the top. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah, probably it, just a joke. Yeah, I was going to say, he's not in the movie. Um, so, 
yeah, there's not really any great. Uh, there's a here's a, a seven out of ten. This is the best review we got here. This is from Chev's Rule A. Get Chev's it. underscore. Get it. Chev's Rule A. Get it. Oh, so they like Chevys? I guess. So. I, don't I don't know. know. Maybe they're a big fan of she- Chevy Chase. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's Chev's Rule A. It's a Canadian fan of Chevy Chase. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm going <laughs> with. Okay, anyways. <laughs> the, uh, it says, enjoyable. I liked it. I mean... It isn't going to win any awards for groundbreaking ideas, but it was a movie that I made it through in one sitting. (laughs) With my attention span, that's saying something. I've uh, seen reviews saying, ageist, I don't see it. There's a guy who sees an opportunity for making money from people uh, pawning off a group of people who are typically seen as incapable or in, in the way, but... A heartwarming tale ensues with good amount of head trauma. Basically, <laughs> a coming of age movie for an adult. Makes sense. I think. I mean, that's a good review, actually. So yeah, there's not really. Yeah, of the six reviews I was able to find on here, there's not really that good of reviews. So um, yeah, that's what we got for the reviews here. <clears throat> but um, yeah, you know, you had like ten out of tens for Tooth Fairy Two. Yeah, and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, well, Dennis I mean, the Menace Christmas or whatever. Yeah, but those movies have been out a little longer too. So I mean, give people time to watch the movie. You yeah. know, I'm sure there's going to be some, you know, better reviews and stuff coming up. Like the one I'm going to write right after this. Yeah, man. No, I'm not. No. I don't really feel like doing that. Yeah, I got better things to do with my yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> like sleep. Yeah. Um. Anyways, you uh, sleep right after I leave. No. Okay. So I figured <laughs> we usually talk to each other after. Yeah. Anyway, so um, yeah, it's funny when like when you when you get older, it's like sleepovers are like no longer like really cool anymore. But like what happens is like like okay, I, I gotta go, I gotta leave now and, and go chill out at house. But then we just start <laughs> messaging each other anyway. It's like it's like you know what I, I need I need to I need to like relax on my own couch. Oh yeah, you know. Your couch isn't good enough. I need to no. go home and drive to my own house and then sleep, uh, lay on my own couch, and then just message you. That's how it works. That's how it works. Okay, so interesting thing, Matt. Um, you know this, and I think it's something we should share with our fans. Um, we, have, we have, which uh, I hope you have liked, a Facebook fan page for All Too Real 2. The other day... We got a message from somebody on there. I mean, we, we get messages on there from time to time, but um, usually from somebody suggesting something for us to watch or somebody telling us they want to be on the show or something like that. This one, this guy just says, hello. This guy's, I won't say his name just because legal reasons. <laughs> Anyways, um, I say, Hi. And then he says, how are you? Starting out normal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm like, good. His next thing is, you have podcast. Yeah. And then we say, yes, this is the page for it. <clears throat> then he says, I am a professional podcast promoter. Do you want any service for your podcast? And we respond, we do not have a large budget now to afford that. And then he says, how much do you have budget? And we say $3.49 U.S. Domestic, US, US dollars. That was me. <laughs> yeah, that was Matt. Fan. <laughs> and then he says, par day? And instead of per day, he says par day. Yeah. And then Matt responded with total, I'm afraid. <laughs> And then, then he says, "You have Fiverr, which is a, which is a website where you can hire people to do tasks and stuff." Um, and we respond with, "No, why? We do have a Fiverr, but that's never you know neither here nor there. <laughs> anyway, at least I do. Anyways, so <clears throat> and then he says, "If you work with me, I will give you money." Subscribe, reviews, rating, download, 
in top rank on iTunes store. We said, how? And uh, he says, I will share your podcast on social media. You will get many listener. You can give me par month $200. And, and I just want to mention something here when the social media thing comes up. I checked out this guy's page at that point. He had 126 friends. I have more friends than that. Yeah. I have 144, and that's kind of low for Facebook yeah. or whatever, you know. And I'm not bragging or anything, but I have three and a half thousand friends. Right. I could get more people to listen to my podcast just mm-hmm. by emailing like yeah. a quarter of them. Right. And secondly, I already mentioned we only have total three dollars and forty nine cents. Yes. Not a month. No. Total. And, and he's he like, could you give us two hundred a month? Okay, so that's <laughs> over two thousand dollars a year. Okay, that's different than three dollars mm-hmm. forty nine cents. Okay. And so then we're Some we failed math class. Then we're like, we do not have that. And then he's like, how much you can give me? And we said, three dollars and forty nine cents. USD. Yeah, I made sure to say USD. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, and then he just randomly said the word yes. Like he's acknowledged. Wow, that was a nice voice crack there. Like he was acknowledging, yeah, that or, or we don't, don't know, know what. Or was he agreeing to that? Like he just went down from two hundred dollars to three dollars forty nine cents. So in one of the proudest moments of my life, <laughs> I just said to him, "They are a great band." <laughs> Talking about the band, yes, yeah. And uh, he just says, "You can give me," and. I said, a link to Yes Music? (laughs) And he said, okay. (laughs) And then he said, please let me know you can give me payment. And then I shared with him the the music video for Owner of a Lonely Heart by (laughs) Yes. Which is the proudest moment of my whole life. Yeah. Yes. Anything I've ever done, movies I've accomplished, you know. That's charity i've done good things i've done for people this, that all eclipse all, all yes that stuff. Yeah. just this <laughs> <laughs> and then he said after i sent him that if you want i will promote your youtube channel and i posted <laughs> don't know what that meant and i was like we don't have a youtube channel to share I mean, Colin Park does have a YouTube channel, but he, he didn't need to know that, and that no. wasn't where that video came from. And then he's like, again, he's like, you can give me payment? And I was like, four? <laughs> Question mark. He's like, I will promote your podcast. And I was like, how exactly? <laughs> he just went back to... <laughs> he, says, he says, what do you want? <laughs> Any services do you want? Um... And then I said, uh, to know how you would promote us. Also, do you have any customer testimonials? And he said, uh, sure, I have testimonial. If you check my Fiverr account, you can see that. I will promote your podcast by iTunes, subscribe, review, rating, download. I was like, do you have a resume? (laughs) And he shares two random pictures of what looks like the front page of um, some podcast app with like their top 10 podcasts or something. So he's saying that he 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 like launched those podcasts. That's what that's what I took from it. A guy, man, he he's got 126 friends. Maybe he just lays low, you know. Maybe yeah. maybe, maybe we we screwed up here, you know. Uh-huh. And then he says, and I said to him, I mean, I said, do you work with these podcasts? And he says, yes. Oh, okay. if you want, I will give you same service. And uh, and I said, and one the first one I saw on there was a financial podcast hosted by Susie Orman, okay. who is like you know a. Internationally known financial expert. Yeah. (laughs) 
who has like a show on cable and stuff. I doubt she needs so, his help. Yeah, that's what I'm, <laughs> that's what I'm going with. Yeah, anyways. Um, and I said, so if we contacted Susie Orman, <laughs> she would know who you are then? Question mark. And then he's ignoring my question. Of course. And he says, if you want, I sent you my Bayer, B-A-Y-E-R. I don't know if, what if he's talking about, like, Bayer Aspirin or something or what. I don't know. Um, Facebook account. And I'm like, okay. Maybe he's Bayer? Yeah, probably. Um, That's probably what he meant. And um, he sent me some random guy's Facebook account who happened to, I looked at the guy's account, happened to supposedly... He does have a podcast and everything, and he supposedly went to a couple of high schools in the Toledo area. Hmm. I'm not going to mention the guy's name or anything like that out of fear of litigation. So, um, just just letting you know that if yeah. you if you know, that's it. Okay. Anyways, um, so I just said to him, "Bear," with a question mark. <laughs> It should have had like a picture of like bear Asper. I, I thought that. about it, no. but I didn't get it in time before he started <laughs> answering. And then um, he said, "He said, uh, he says, please contact him and asked about me. I did work with him last month. There, there have music podcast. And then he mentions the guy's name and says, "Is my clients? I'm pretty sure he's only one person." But he's somehow clients. Well, he's yeah. obviously sec- English is like, like a second, second language. language. Yeah, him, I mean, yeah. I'll give him that. Or he's using some kind of bad translator. Maybe, yeah. That's and, true. and um, and I said, what about all the people in the pics you shared above? The 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 pics of the of the uh, that's what I said to him of those uh that podcast thing with Susie Orman and all oh, that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Anyways, um, so he said just. I tell you only about that guy that you just mentioned. He said he is my clients. And so the dude from Toledo is his client. Yeah. I'm not going to say his name either. No. But. And then um I said uh I said, "But you said you worked with the podcasts in the photos you sent." And then he says, "Yes." And then he says, just I sent you sample about my work. You should have sent another Mm. song from Yes. And then I said, then I should be able to contact those people and they will know you, correct? And then he's ignoring that again. (laughs) Exactly. And he says, he live in USA, so please, you can contact him after six hours. Because this was pretty late at night, so after I'm thinking. six hours? What? <laughs> okay. Like, he has a time limit, like, after yeah. six hours. Okay. And I said, not an answer to my question. And he says, yes, you can know all. And then I said, still avoiding the question. No, also, what is he, is he, is he at, yeah. like, offering godhood now? I don't know. I you guess can so. Know I can know all. I can be, you should have I took can... him up and they're like, okay, <laughs> give me the power to know all. I should have asked him what the meaning of life was yeah. or something. <laughs> Anyways, um, and then he says, uh, st- and, and I said, still avoiding the question I asked, and he says, which question? Please let me know. Oh, God. And I said, the questions about the podcast in the photos you shared, do you work with them, and if so, can I contact them? Then he shares with me some random photo from uh, from the Apple Podcast app, where uh, it shows that guy that he was talking about his podcast, and that it has a five star rating. Okay, but it only had like forty three ratings, which were probably all fake, anyways. Yeah, so that's how he that's how he probably gets the. Five star ratings. So all he does, basically, what he does. Okay, I know what happened. So yeah. <clears throat> sorry, I'm clearing my throat. I have some issues right now. But um, <clears throat> what happened was, cause I I did this once with Facebook. I paid like thirty five dollars um for my music page on Facebook to get promoted. Yeah, and I got like five hundred likes on my page in like a, a period of like ten days. And I noticed though, like. Almost all of them were for like from like Brazil, 
Yeah. I'm not saying that, you know... And then some of them they, probably fell off, too, after a while. Or, yeah, I or, think so. Or yeah. inactive accounts. Or I'm whatever. not saying that people from Brazil don't like rock music, because... Brazil yeah. actually is one of the biggest countries for metal music, but it's just um, suspicious when they're all from the same country. Well, yeah, ex- regardless of the because country. exactly because I because I I was able to actually um, specify what countries I wanted to target. Brazil yeah. was one of the countries. Yeah, but so was the United States. So was Germany because Germany also has like a a pretty thriving metal and rock scene, and, and as does Japan. So I, I listed Japan. I was basically listing countries where people like that type of music yeah and and so those are like the the four main ones okay but like 95 percent all came from brazil i got like one dude from germany no one from japan like two people from the united states but everyone yeah. else came from brazil and i did some research digging around and it turns out brazil is one of and not just brazil but latin america in general is one of the biggest areas where they have quote like farms which are basically just fake profiles oh, yeah. that people create to then promote that's, that's your what page. like a lot of Fiverr is too. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I've come across that. Um, and then uh, okay, anyways, we sent that picture, and he said, "This podcast is the th- this podcast is this client podcast. You can contact him." Mm-hmm. So I said, "So you have only one client. Why did you share the other um, photos?" And that's when he said, please stop massaging me. <laughs> Not messaging him. No, actually, it was please stop massage me. Yeah, it's even better. I like, I like it like that. Yeah, please stop massage me. Not massaging, but massaging. me. We're going to make that into a t-shirt. Yeah, so please stop massage me is going to be a t-shirt that we will release sometime mm-hmm. soon. We've already got, we're working on the Mateo Kills the Crow. Yeah, we're still working on that one. I'm trying to figure out the photos for that. Right. For that. That's for our other podcast. So but, we, yeah. we got some really cool yeah. ID, some t-shirts here for you guys. And then I was like, okay, no problem. Pretty sure you're a scammer. Um, and then I said, I never massaged you, by the way. I messaged you. <laughs> and then his, uh, then his account disappeared. Yeah. Um, I had reported it to Facebook as well, so I think that's why it disappeared. So, um, he must have been doing that to a lot of people, though. For, yeah, for one report, he must have oh, been I know. getting a lot of yeah, because uh, Facebook sucks at their uh, right thing anyway. So, um, yeah, and I did try to report the uh, other profile of the guy that supposedly lives in Toledo because he's somehow working with him, but uh, Facebook says that it doesn't violate any of their standards. So, oh, so the dude from Toledo, he's like, he's not just like some dude, like, he's he might Actually, he, he could be a legit person, but my thing is is he told me to message him. I never did. Right. I'm just afraid if I message him then. But I probably should have messaged him and warned him about this guy. But I don't know. No, your 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 first suspicion was probably correct. He's probably either He's probably working with him. Another profile of him. Or... I listened to his podcast. Oh, yeah. and I it, it didn't have that great a production quality, but it wasn't bad. But he was supposedly a sound engineer, and yet it didn't have that great a sound. So I was kind of confused by that. Maybe he just didn't anyways, have good equipment or something. Yeah, I don't know what it was. But anyways, so that's our little story, folks. Look out for Please Stop Massage Me t-shirts <laughs> coming soon to our T Public store. And remember, anything you buy there helps support this show and all of our other shows yeah. and any future projects we uh, decide to uh, create for the podcast network or our films, which we are hoping to have some good ones coming up very soon. We're uh, bringing on some producers and stuff for that. And if you uh, are interested, um, also check out our Patreon because we might have some cool deals on there coming up soon. And we would love to work with you on podcasts or uh, movies and you can help support us and, you know, get your name in the credits or something or, you know, whatever that will thank you on the show. And, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do backflips I can't do a backflip. Neither can I, but we'll do them. <clears throat> well, I'll probably land on my back and hurt it real yeah, bad. See, see, we're willing to hurt our backs for you folks. Yeah. I can't even, couldn't even do a backflip on a trampoline. I, I could do, do a either. front flip, but the backflip, I had like this psychological thing. I just yeah. couldn't force myself to do it. So I mean, I jumped off the roof of a garage onto a mattress once and almost broke my neck. Oh, so wow. I really don't like jumping, period. Yeah. Yeah. That why was, why that did was, you do that? Well, my cousins were up from Florida, and they're older than me, and they decided to pull the mattress out of their uh, dad's uh, guest 
bedroom and uh, mm-hmm. put it out in the backyard and the garage roof was there and uh, they put a cape on me and um, I th- if I remember correctly, which was like just a blanket <clears throat> tied around my neck and uh, they wanted to do it. But I think I was the guinea pig, if I remember correctly, and I jumped and I bounced <laughs> off of it onto the ground and I had to wear a neck brace for a little bit. Wow. Yeah. Thanks, cousins. <laughs> yeah. Good times. Good times. Yeah. Good times. That was about as fun as the time I got hit in the face with a with uh, with, a, with a metal a steel uh, bat when we were playing t ball in the backyard of my other friend's house. I had some good childhood memories, wow. man. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And then the time I tried to, anytime I tried to do anything active, I would hurt myself. <laughs> you know, I fell off my bike a few times. Right into like big gravel oh, pits, that, that hurts. Uh, you know, I yeah, and scraped myself up. <clears throat> I, uh, I, I decided to try to play t ball when I was like five or six years old, you know, and I got chicken pox the next week and I couldn't play the rest of the season. Oh, it sucks. So, yeah, <clears throat> that basically that should have been my first warning that I've never allowed to do anything Don't athletic, do sports, sports, or anything, <clears throat> you know, that is physical. Which is interesting because your dad was like actually like really like into sports he's, he was like, really younger. good yeah yeah he's, he was like he was like he was a coach of softball and baseball teams and different yeah. things like that and I think basketball teams and stuff like that. he was really good at multiple sports mm-hmm. and yeah you just didn't get that gene no you know what sucks though <clears throat> um you know you talked about like falling off your bike and stuff and that hurts but have you ever like run into like a telephone pole and like that weird vibration feeling when you run into something. Oh yeah, like that's like almost as bad as like scrape. Well, maybe not as bad, but it's a really weird yeah. sensation when you like run into something and you just like almost like that weird impact because you're like it's just like this weird vibration thing that goes on, like especially on your hands on the handlebars. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah it's. Ugh. It I think the worst thing I ever had happen was actually when I was in college, and I was working at a video store. And on the, I was taking a bus there, and I was hanging out on the college campus, and I had to go catch the bus. And the the uh, transportation center was on the other side of a railroad track. And uh, I see the bus coming, so I'm running, running, and I trip on the on the railroad oh, track man. right into this big, you know, the big pile of rocks, scrape up both of my arms because I tried to brace myself. And um, so I get over there and the bus is sitting there and I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. And it's not my bus. <laughs> I thought my bus was running early, but it was actually the bus that comes before my bus. So it was all for nothing. Yeah. And so then I go into the restroom of the transportation center and I'm wiping off my uh, arms that are bleeding all over the place. And then I'm wrapping them up in paper towels and the bus gets there and I get on the bus looking like I just, (laughs) you know, died. And then, um, yeah, then I get to work and I luckily they we had a first aid kit and I wrapped up my arms and yeah, that that was fun. So, yeah, that's why I don't run. I mean, I I'm supposed to run in this movie that I'm acting in soon and um, for a scene, I may have to ask for my pay to be doubled. Just for that scene. Just to run, yeah. Yeah. I'm doing the movie for free, by the way. But anyways, um, so... <laughs> Paid double, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just joking. It's kind of like when your dad said, like, tell him I'm going to give Matt double what I gave him for Christmas last year. Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute, he didn't give me anything last year. <laughs> so, so anyways, um, yeah, we're, we're getting over an hour here, so we should probably uh, cut it now. Um, anyways, uh, so just uh, just to let you know, you can continue to message me, people. But please stop, massage me. Yeah. Please stop, massage me. That is all. <laughs> bye bye. Thanks for listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Hawes. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at cullenpark.com. Two.